Hey, you guys. So, uh, I tried talking about feminism and, uh, my laptop cut me off twice in two different ways. Like one time it just went and like, I just disappeared and I like kept talking, but it was like, I didn't exist anymore. Like you couldn't see me through the vortex. And then the second time it just stopped me and it was like, you have no more storage space. <laughs> I wish that my brain would do that. But I just keep going. And that's why I can't, like, finish anything I start. Because, like, I have so many things that I start all at once. That'd be really cool if I, like, finished all those things, like, collectively. Like, that would just be incredible, wouldn't it? But life doesn't work out like that. When you have psychological problems, it makes things more difficult. But the cool thing about it is, like, if you can live artistically, you can turn it into something better than, you know, psychological problems. <laughs> so I was going to, like, stop somewhere and get something to eat. But I'm like, why do that when you can just steal food from your parents' house? That's, like, one part about having, like, like a mediocre relationship with your parents is that, you know, you can just like steal food occasionally, just as long as you're not stealing money, like, it's fine. <laughs> I just stole a pen, you guys. I stole a pen from the uh, credit union that I belong to. I feel like it was my pen, like I could take it, you know, I feel like I'm part of the family. Like they wouldn't mind if I have their pen. That's the only thing I feel now, because I used to be like a total klepto. And, uh, I was a klepto because that was my way of lying to myself and others. That's why I quit doing it, because I didn't want to lie. If only I could steal and not have to lie about it. I could just be open. Openly a thief. That would, that would be ideal, but, um... <laughs> I was going to make a racial joke, but <laughs> just make it. I mean, you already said it. You might as well say it now. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that I'm black on the inside and that's why, I, you know, I don't think that black people are kleptos though. I think that that's like a, a white thing. <laughs> like if you make an art out of it, if you make an art out of just being a fucking liar, that seems like a white thing. Does it not? <laughs> I mean, that's why I had to come to terms with it. I felt like I was like, what's that? There's a, a, um, a term for uh, pathological lying. I, I believe it's called pseudologia fantastica, which makes it sound really exciting. <laughs> like, dude, I want to go to that fucking fantasy world. Like, that sounds crazy good. <laughs> Uh, see, yeah, lying, I, I don't like liars, but people lie all the time, and, like, I pick up on it easily because I feel like I'm a liar, but I don't actually lie. I tell too much truth, that's what I do, but I live in a fantasy world, so that's the lie, you know, because that's the place where I, I spend the most time, you know? Like, I wonder if people actually considered that, like, you know, if somebody's, like, working some shit job, like, that, I think about, like, people that suffered way more than I, I'll ever suffer, you know, and I always think about them when I'm from suffering, you know, but I mean, I have a psychological issue, you know, like a major one that begets other psychological issues. Um, and borderline personality begets more borderline personality, begets anxiety, begets depression, begets PTSD, begets fibromyalgia, begets uh, more PTSD. <laughs> I 
I started up my own Bible, y'all. Speaking of Bibles, let's see what it says. Jesus took our hell so that we can have his heaven. Well, thank you very much, First Baptist. <laughs> not the second, not the third, not the fourth, two, six, seven, eight Baptist, but the First Baptist. Oh, um, I know I'm fucking funny. And it's like, I see myself on a stage all the time now. And I already did that, but now it makes so much sense out of my life and my personality disorder. Especially now in fucking America and fucking smartphones and fucking bullshit and fucking everything. Like, I just, <laughs> I just feel like I can't say enough shit that would do my shitty viewpoint justice. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's like, there's so much shit to choose from in this fucking country that loves to, like, play the victim and, and then act like they didn't know anything was wrong. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just bamboozled, you guys, bamboozled. I really like that word. I'm gonna use my friend's joke. Shout out to my friend Nathan Tesser, who is like has a baby now, which is fucking crazy. I never thought that you would ever like have kids. Like, I mean, no offense. Like, that's cool. I'm just saying. And I'm, I, I feel like that's a stereotype that anybody that listens to like death metal shouldn't have kids. Like, that's not true. Y'all are like some of the most sensitive people in the world. Anyway, um, what's this at? Death metal, they, uh, what did I say before that? I just, uh, now I have a system of down in my head. Wake up, wake up, watch a bottle of a makeup! <laughs> Why do they have kids on the table? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like such a fun song to sing. Like, especially when you're angry, like, how could it not make you feel better? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm not like a hardcore system of down fan, you guys. I mean, I like them, but I don't like them enough to like listen to them a lot or anything like that. I just know about that. They're most popular songs, so I'm just like the people that I bitch about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I really am. Ugh. Oh, what the fuck were you talking about? You were talking about Nathan. Why are you talking about Nathan? No. I'm talking about the time we, we did mushrooms together. God, does anybody in the Vortex have some psychedelic mushrooms? If so, you need to come to my house. <laughs> we'll do some real surviving. See, is, is this bad that, like, I'm just thinking, like, man, maybe people aren't coming to my house show because I'm not giving them the right drugs. <laughs> I'm just giving them weed, you know, that's not enough. It is though. That's the thing, if you eat an edible and you do that with people, I mean, it's like you're all like experiencing it together. It's like being on ecstasy. It's like a lower grade ecstasy, only you don't feel like shit and you don't crash really hard and you might be tired or like irritable later, but it's not like the ecstasy crash. <laughs> But I compare it to ecstasy because it, I feel like it's, like, when people describe, like, what ecstasy does, it's, like, it's supposed to release, like, all your, like, serotonin or dopamine, like, at the same time or whatever. Like, I don't know. It, it, it releases all that happy shit in your brain, right? Well, we don't have much of that. So, anytime I'm on ecstasy, I think I still am suicidal. So, it's just, it's just, like, made me realize, like, how depressed I truly am, um, but, like, marijuana, like, does that. Like, the closest thing to that experience. And, like, I'm able to be sad and not in a suicidal way. Like, I accept my sadness. And that's what so many people don't want. They don't want to accept that they're sad. They don't want to accept that they have negative emotions. They don't want to accept that they're angry. And then other people accept it too much. They just rage and, you know. It's like, y'all need to find a happy medium. But for me, it's like, I always had an unhappy medium. And 
it's in that unhappy medium that I guess I found some sort of balance. It's just accepting that I don't have that. Like, I, I, my shit is very off kilter, you know? Like, it's never gonna be on kilter. That's fine. I'm just tired. I don't fight, I don't fight who I am anymore. I don't fight, like, the things that I think, how I feel. what I do on a daily basis. Like, I've always been this way, you know? That's why I'm saying that people don't change. They stay the same. Like, they find different ways to stay the same. <laughs> you know? That's what they do. <laughs> Write that down. That's fucking brilliant. See? The brilliance just, it happens on on the road. I don't know why, but it's just like, whenever I'm behind the wheel, whenever I'm behind the wheel, The brilliance just comes spewing out of me. See, y'all just gotta believe this shit. So I was watching these girls, these like female comics in like Europe that are like really good. And they just seem like so real. Like I think I can get along with them. I feel like the only reason I can get along with them is because they're fucking European bitches. You know? <laughs> like American bitches are so fucking catty and petty and stupid and like gossipy and like just it's retarded. Like and I don't know if it's like different elsewhere. Because I've never been elsewhere. I go elsewhere in my head. Why would I spend money, you know? Everybody tells me to go to fucking New York to, like, try to get on SNL and shit like that. And I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> like, why would I, why would I do that when I could just, like, live inside my head and that shit's free? You know? Like, people don't realize that, you know, like, with mental illness, it's like you pay so much money to, like, get better or, like, try to fix yourself. Whether you fix yourself or you hurt yourself. They're like one and the same, right? It's like all the stuff that you try to do to help yourself. Alcohol, drugs. Maybe you take psych meds. Maybe you go see a shrink. But really, you should just be looking that stuff up on your own. I'm glad that I, you know, wasted my life for a little while. I'm glad now. At the time, it was not fun. <laughs> but also at the time I was living elsewhere you know so it's like did I really experience that you know <laughs> did I really get drunk all those times in succession and wake up in urine did I really do that I don't know because I was somewhere else I mean I was off, I was in a blackout but it's like that's why alcohol is so bad if you have borderline personality just leave it alone just don't fucking touch it because it's gonna fuck with you like you were gonna turn into an ugly ass version of yourself and you're just gonna you know, keep adding to, like, to that list, uh, you know, they have, like, AA, which I don't really agree with, I mean, I agree with, like, the ideal of it, like, okay, like, you fucked up, like, own where you fucked up, that's good, but some people just, they, they get way too serious about it, I realize that a lot of people just don't think about things, like, the way that an alcoholic is gonna think about things, like, oh, yeah, that, you know, that time that I disagreed with you on, like, you know, that, uh, I know Pat Oswalt has a joke about it, it's hilarious, uh, like, God, I, I'm not gonna do it justice, so I'm not even gonna try, but he has a joke about, like, people in AA just like to, like, come up to you and apologize for, like, really dumb shit that's, like, trivial and meaningless, but, like, to explain to you, Pat, and why they do that, or why we do that, it's because we analyze the fuck out of everything, we think that everything's fucking important, and it's not, um, it's really not important to, like, other people. Like, they just don't care that much, you know? But I find it funny, though, because... I mean, I have a camera crew in my head that's just constantly, like, zooming in on all the times that I fuck up things, which is often. Uh, so I have a lot of footage of that that I have to fight, you know? It's not just, like, I'm fighting my depression. I'm fighting that footage. <laughs> like, it's, it's horrible. But anyway... Um, let's say it. Apologies. 
apologies. A lot of people apologize for stupid things. I've noticed that you don't have to be crazy to do this. It's part of like, I don't know if it's American MO, but I kind of sort of feel like it would be, or it should be, or it goddamn well is. Uh, <laughs> I'm funny, you guys. I'm really fucking funny, and you should put me on your show. If you have a show, you should put me on it, because I'm funnier than anybody else that you can put on a show. Uh, I'm confident in this, because I'm confident in how crazy I am, and I'm confident that being this crazy uh, means that this is the only thing that I can do and do well. So, uh, I'm good at talking when I get going, but it's getting me going. It's the problem. That's why I'm late for everything. Uh, and I make up a lot of excuses as to why I'm late. But the main excuse is, I'm sorry, I was in another time zone. Uh, what, we're on central time? <laughs> I don't even know if we're on central. I don't even know what time zone I'm in. I know I live in Tennessee, and Tennessee's fucked in a lot of ways. But there are some beautiful hills around here, I will say that. I'm experiencing some of that right now. Uh, oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy, I'm so lordy with the USA. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, do you, you think they have speed bumps in Europe? <laughs> Like, or like, uh, you know those fucking drains that like come out of the street to like fuck up your car? Like, what just happened to me? God fucking damn it. I fucking hate that shit. I hate when I fuck up my car and now I'm gonna have to like take it to the auto place down the street. You know, your car is a dicky piece of shit though, remember that. So it's like, maybe you fuck up your car, maybe then it's already pretty fucked, right? See, that's the good thing about me, y'all. Damaged goods over here. You can't really fuck me up anymore. You can't fuck the hell out of me, though. You could do that. If you do it on my period, I won't call you a faggot. You know, you might not want to be driving all crazy. I drive fucking crazy, you guys. Oh, the only reason I'm driving crazy is because all these goddamn drains, like, popping out of the fucking street, like, Fuck that shit, man. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Terrible. It's really fucked up. Car. See? <laughs> I love my life, though. I really do. I mean, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, make your personality sort of fun. Uh, and, like, I feel like, what the fuck am I now? God damn it. Uh, I'm on like the nicer part of the, the street where the road isn't so fucked up. I would see these people, these people live in bigger houses. Like, God damn, these are really nice houses. I like looking at houses, you guys. That's why I thought I was going to be a real estate agent. And then I realized like that I'm just not like, you know, professional enough to be a real estate agent. You'd be hilarious. Like, you imagine, like, dude, I just came up with a really nice idea. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to tell you Vortex. I don't want maybe the Vortex to fucking steal it. Like, you know, I worry about that because, like, I'm a really hard-ass worker, but the thing is, like, I can't stay focused on shit. So, I'm, I'm envious of people that can stay focused long enough to do a fucking set list and make it work and shit. I can't do that. I end up getting distracted and talking about something else entirely. I've always done that, and I will always do that. And the more that I realize about myself, I'm just like, Amy, you're fighting against yourself. Like, you need to stop trying to be organized and structured and shit. Like, you're not that kind of person. Why are you trying to be that kind of person? And so, I'm going to show you guys another system that I've come up with. I think I've already talked about it, but I guess I need to talk about it again. I'll try to keep it brief. I'll try. I didn't make any promises there. Uh, for a reason. Okay, we've been talking for 20 minutes. Sorry, all I can see is the fucking sun. I hate the goddamn sun. Um, I don't know. 
Okay. I love you, Lou. I fucking love you. You're still alive in my heart. Um, so, uh, this is red. It's for borderline personality. Um, this is what happens to me, you guys. I don't document this because I don't... Like, if I just did a documentary about me, like, oh my god. Another great idea that I just came up with. Okay, I gotta write this shit down. Robin, I'm writing all this for you. By the way, I just wrote that down as well. Um, this is what happens to me. I try to t talk about something, like, I start writing a joke, right? Um, and then I, I get distracted. I start talking about something else. I, my mind changes on something else. And so I have to talk. I, 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 I've tried to organize it. This is the rant black or white. See, I try to make the colors like mean something like red, borderline, like hot red, like feisty, you know, I, I have a, a, and it's real extreme, like fire, you know, <laughs> stop, you know, stop sign. <laughs> Just think of all things that are associated with red, like fire engine. Um, I should write that down. Um, because like, this is, this is funny. Like, I'm hilarious. Like, I have so much awesome shit about being on this side. Like, I just came up with something else. This is in my rant, black or white notebook. See, I just don't know where to put it, you know, because I know that it, like, contributes to something else that I've already written about. So, and then, and then I get distracted, and then I'm like, no, you gotta get the sign, you gotta get the sign, you gotta get the sign before it leaves us, and then we start talking about something else, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. I'm on a fucking time crunch, that's why my comedy is really interesting, it doesn't say the same, so, I know that I'm, I was born to do this, man, born to fucking do it, uh, it's like, I just came up with, like, 10 brilliant ideas in, like, the span of 30 seconds, like, dude, you have any idea, and then, so, this is, this is very, uh, I think it's because I'm at my parents' house. I'm like, like, I feel like I'm, I have a panic attack. So I'm like, huh. like, I'm at, I'm on like high alert. So this is why all the brilliance is coming out right now. Um, what were you talking about? If you can figure out what you were talking about, then you'll go back. This, this is what you got to do. If you got a personality disorder, you have to like figure out your method, a method that you can deal with it in the best possible way and make it work for you. Make it work. I just think about Tim Gunn every time. Uh, Anyway, love gay men. That's what I'm missing in my life. I need another gay man. Like, I miss my friend Paul. I'm really sorry that I stopped talking to you. I was just being a cunt. See what I'm saying? I was talking about this earlier. People that are on the same scale with, like, a mental illness, the one that I have is really pronounced. But when you're on the same scale, it's like your, your conception of time is off. And it's like your conception of yourself is off. All that. You might be like really, really aware of everything, but you're also, because you're so aware, you have a blind spot in that. So I don't know. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's them. This time it was me. I'm sorry. I wish we could still keep talking. I hope nothing bad has happened. Uh, he was like my gay dude that like I would talk to and like, we could just talk for hours about like how fucked up everything was and like how bitter we were about it. Um, <laughs> anyway. He would laugh at that. Like, I could totally hear him laughing. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, like, you know, like, do that. I love that. That's like the best kind of laugh. Cause you know, like you're getting something more, like it just keeps going. And you're like, wow, you're getting even more of that. You know, it's like an ongoing thing. Okay. So what were you talking about? 
borderline personality. This is my fire. Okay. What? what where? Which? Which notebook would this go in, though? That's what I get stuck on. The, the trying to be organized and shit. I'll just start a new page, goddammit. A D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D So I can't stop this train. Oh, what you call it? The boohoo choo choo. That's what it was. Yeah, that's funny. Um, what's I talking about? Colors. I guess I'm really racist. <laughs> I mean, I like all of them, except the white ones, except white colors. I don't like white. I can do white in small doses. <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> That's really funny, dude. You just talk about fucking pigments and shit. <laughs> Art, art with the art with the aimless. <laughs> Call myself a fartist. I'm just shit. <laughs> this is fartistry. <laughs> okay. What was I talking about there? Okay, I wrote down one thing. <laughs> I don't know what all the other thoughts were. I don't remember. I must be really high, you guys. Let's see if I can score some free food for my parents. My mom's always like, have you eaten? How do you eat and get something out of the fridge? Do that. She doesn't really talk like that. I can't do a good impression of my mom because my mom is like very generic. Like her voice is just not, you know, like I can only do good impressions of people that like are annoying. Like, I mean, my mom's annoying since, like, she nags, but, I mean, I can't really do a good, I don't know, it's weird, it's hard to do that. I can do a good impression of my brother, though. It's because the, uh, he talks like he's from New York, but he's not. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. I feel like he's, like, in the mafia or some shit. He used to, like, wear gold chains all the time, too, I don't know why. He's less racist than he used to be. But I told him that I fucked like a black dude. And then I got fingered by another black dude at a bar. 
I was like, you're just going to have to deal with that shit. And I feel like I probably let those things happen. Like, you know, and I don't mean let it happen. Like I let these black people touch me. Like, I didn't mean it like that. I meant to like, I always feel like I just let things happen. Like it just, I'm not living my life. You know, it's just like, Oh, there you are. <laughs> like, okay. I guess you're doing that now. That's fine. <laughs> I don't feel like I downgraded or anything like that. That's how people look at it. It's fucked up. I just think everybody's like the same. I give everybody the benefit of doubt and also expect disappointment. So there's that too. Holly cited. This goes along with ADD though. ADD, but you couldn't figure out what to, what to put it, like where to, because they're, it's like all the, all my thoughts, like they could relate to something and anything. I just feel like this is the only way that I can be like, try to be organized. So this is about borderline personality, like a- aspects of it, different aspects of it. Um, a lot of people, see, I'm coming up with this joke right now. Y'all get to hear my jokes for the first time ever. A lot of people are one dimensional. You're lucky if you get two dimensions. I really like rhombuses. <laughs> That's all I know about geometry. <laughs> Wait, and that is the extent. <laughs> my geometry knowledge. (laughs) Well, we poly sided. why I have a different take on everything. (laughs) When you're poly side though, it's hard to like stick to anything though, which is what, that's the problem with it. That's why I haven't done anything with my life. You know, the people that aren't, that are more like one dimensional, like they're able to like finish what they start, you know, because they can stay focused and they can like, you know, remain confident. Like, okay, I'm doing this, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it is to be normal. I'm sorry. I don't know that. I never thought that I could ever get there, you know? Like, maybe when we're 25. (laughs) At 25, I realized, like, nope, it's getting worse. (laughs) Okay, uh, anyway, I'm out of it now. I'm out of the shit. I'm, like, 31, going on 32. Awesome! Getting up there. Anyway. (laughs) Okay, so this one... Well, yeah, I told you guys, this is rant. So this is like the, the black or white shit, but it's very poly I guess I won the shit lottery. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, it's all I do is rant. Um, about all different types of shit. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know why I put it out. I don't know what I was going to put outside inside so i just left it oh like just it doesn't make any sense so this is like the i'll just like random shit this is like my add shit just like random just like me talking about bands that i i like or don't like or you know uh This whole thing is about Beverly Hills 90210 and the correlation between law and order. Like, like this this whole thing is just about crime dramas and, uh, shit. Oh my God. See, this is why I'm not a real girl. Um, see, when you you cry a lot, like, you have to rub your eyes all the time. Like, and so there's no point in ever wearing mascara because you're going to look like a raccoon. And, like, it's cool to look like a raccoon when, like, you know, you're taking a picture and, like, you're Courtney Love and you're trying to be cool. But, like, uh, 
it's it's uh, not cool like when you're just you know driving around miserable and uh, so <laughs> it's not it's not cool it's not as cool as corny lip for obvious reasons but um what was I saying you fucked up your makeup not entirely maybe a little bit maybe maybe I need to rub it in that's good maybe yeah make me even at least <laughs> I forgot that I put eyeshadow on, so I just started rubbing my eyes, and I was like, fuck! Don't you know the hard work that we did on our eyelids today? It took, like, 30 seconds, because, like, that's that's the only, that's that's the most amount of time I'm willing to spend on makeup, is, like, 30 fucking seconds. It's so crazy to me that, like, women, like, get up, like, extra early to, like, do their hair, and, like, put makeup on and like figure out the perfect outfit and shit sometimes it's so stupid like I'll, I'll try to figure out what to wear for like an hour and a half and then like I'll end up going with what I originally thought I was gonna go with anyway or I'll like just wear like fucking sweatpants or some shit I'll be like you know what fuck it <laughs> I'm wearing pajama pants and flip flops and socks and the same t-shirt that I've been wearing for the past three days that's what I'm gonna do today <laughs> fuck this shit I hate myself anyway I'm yeah, fucking hilarious, you guys. Uh, this is the pink notebook. It's for just like, uh, see, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm trying to organize it, but it's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But it's like, maybe the idea of organization is like, okay, that's what I need. I just need a fucking placebo. And, <laughs> and so, and then, but what I'm gonna do is the same thing that I've been doing. Which is the best thing that I can think of to do. And god damn it, I totally forgot to bring those little thingies that I said I was gonna bring. You could ask your mom for some of them. Maybe she has some. Maybe she has some. Just ask her. You know, she's got some for you. <laughs> My mom's always got some for me, you guys. Usually it's criticism. But, uh, maybe, maybe she's got a paperclip or some, something else. She gives me emotional support. She does. She she doesn't understand what I'm going through, but she she tries though. That's all that matters, Mom. That's all that matters. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll be back, and I'm. I guess we're gonna go to the comedy club tonight. No, it's not a comedy club. It's just a bar. It's a shitty bar. Uh, it has a lot of Christmas lights, but it's awesome. I love this bar. It's great. I kind of want to relapse at this bar, but I'm worried that, like, if I relapse, they're going to have to co- have the cops on, like, standby to have, and I, it's not, it's actually not a good idea either for the cops to be on standby, considering my feelings on the police department. So, uh, <laughs> no good for anyone. So, I'm going to try not to relapse. <laughs>